Hello, everybody. My name is James Gore, Sonoma County Supervisor. I'm here with Mayor Marta Cruz uh, from Cloverdale. We want to thank you guys for joining us. Uh, this is a unique format. Um, we've done in this new world of Zoom, as many of you have, quite a few different uh, ways that we've tried to look at doing business. Um, sometimes when you set up a Zoom, it has all the different little screens of each individual face and other things like that. Um, tonight, what we have set up is more of a forum where uh, we're just trying this for the first time is, uh, is Marta and I are going to go through a series of updates. And there's also, uh, as you will see on the top of your screen on the Zoom, there's an area that you can click that says Q&A or question and answer. And so what we're going to do our best to, to, to work through is a series of different community updates and uh, on what's with going on with the county and then Mayor Cruz will go through on, at, at the same time, what's, uh, what's the thinking in the city itself. And we just wanna make sure that we present a united front. And, um, and I know Mayor Cruz, I wanna pass it over to you in a minute, but you have, um, you have the leadership through the mayor's office, but you also have Vice Mayor Todd Lands, And then we have uh, all your other council members, uh, council member Paula, council member Bagby, and council member Walter, who uh, have been wonderful colleagues for you and also collaborators of mine. So we wanna make sure that this is inclusive. And, um, you know, basically, we had a conversation where we said, you know, what we need to do, we've all been working so much, we've all been disconnected, we haven't had um, the personal connections with people, we haven't had as many forums, people have been in their houses. And uh, even though the world has uh, been tumultuous and it sometimes stopped with COVID, we wanted to make sure people do what we were working on and what our conversations were. Um, final thing I wanna say is, is that we're streaming to you live from, uh, from my home office uh, here, over here in Hillsburg. I wanna thank the mayor for driving up. Um, like you all, we're all dealing with these vaccine protocols and, uh, and, and get together protocols. Mayor and I uh, went through, we both had uh, our vaccines. We both had our, uh, our negative tests and we also have uh, all the windows open to make sure that we uh, honor what's going on. And I hope you're doing the same. Uh, we live in crazy times and uh, resiliency, whether it's fire, flood, drought, or pandemic and vaccine, it all starts with your personal decision. So, uh, Madam Mayor, I just want to thank you. Gracias a usted para compartir este tiempo conmigo. And I um, want you to lead us into what we can expect today over the next hour, maybe a little bit more, and, uh, and what we can look forward to in the next couple of months about maybe continuing some community conversations. Bueno, uh, good afternoon, y muchísimas gracias a todos los que se han unido, que son personas bilingües. Eh, tanto el, el supervisor y yo somos bilingües. You know, this is a good gringo, bilingual gringo from training Bolivia. So, yeah. uh, uh, we are here to answer any questions in English or Spanish. Estamos aquí para contestar preguntas en inglés o en español. Así que si decimos algo, usted está interesado en saber un poquito más al respecto, por favor, eh, asegúrese de comunicarse con nosotros. Uh, pueden hacer la pregunta, escribir la pregunta en el área donde dice uh, Q&A. Q y A. Eh, el asunto de las preguntas. Bien, eh, verdaderamente queríamos hacer esto en persona. We really wanted to do this in person. Uh -huh. uh, we had to cancel last week's, uh, uh, digo, uh, last month's event because of uh -huh. what happened with the Delta variant. And uh, we wanted to do this in person also. We wanted to do a Halloween, Dia de los Muertos, but uh, given the situation and the numbers, uh, it's, it's better that we're just here. We have a mm -hmm. guest, it's a Mr. Cat. Yeah, in the um, background. We might get a dog and some kids in a little bit too. Well, one of the things we're going to discuss is, you know, well, wildfire prevention, emergency preparedness, the initiatives that we've had in the, in the city and the county, mm -hmm. uh, drought conditions, water conservation, efforts to tackle homelessness, updates um, on uh, local funding for nonprofits and some of the activities that the nonprofits are sponsoring, as well as a little bit of a uh, economic profile, which will also be presented during the state of the city um, in, in a week and a half. So we're going to start uh, with um, wildfire prevention. And I, I think you would be the best person since you have been instrumental in providing mm -hmm. funding and uh, having some of your staff communicate with the individuals who are mm -hmm. uh, the stakeholders in making sure that the river 
uh, on the east side has been cleared. And this is a major kudos for Vice Mayor Lance because he has included us in all of the initiatives, but he was really the heart uh, of, of making this happen. You know, um, Mayor Cruz, I, I wanna call this out because, because as everybody talks about with wildfire and wildfire resilience, there's one world that we've really worked on since 2017, and that's emergency preparedness. That's making sure that our response systems are locked tight and we never go back to those days when we don't have good communications, we don't have alert and warnings, we don't have uh, places set up when, when basically the disaster overwhelms us, right? Um, I think many people know and they've seen over the course of the last four years from 2017 and the Tubbs fire forward is not just a uh, vocal commitment, but action on the ground that has been the county and the city moving forward, sometimes in their own efforts and sometimes together. Uh, from the county side, what we did was we invested in and created a top in class Department of Emergency Management. We started testing alert and warnings live in the community. Um, showing how they work, where they don't work, where cell towers don't cover people, other things. Um, we created a recovery and resiliency framework focused on uh, how do we help, help folks rebuild, but then at the same time, how do we work with uh, individuals in places like Parkland Farms up on Pine Mountain above uh, Cloverdale to, <coughs> excuse me, do whatever they need to do in terms of, of making themselves aware, knowing what systems are in place, but then also doing things like, uh, like getting assistance from the county chipper program or us going out and doing defensible space inspections. So I think what, what folks have seen is a top in class county system come out of the dark days of 2017. But then on the other side is, I think of resilience as being the deeper work, right? It's like you can set up the advanced systems to manage disasters, but how do you really get into the world of vegetation management? How do you really get into the world of drought resiliency? How do you pre-defeat disasters as well? And, and you know, the, the most important thing is for mm -hmm. people to understand that it's not mm -hmm. just go to chop all the trees yep. and, and to mm -hmm. uh, chip all the things that have been cut down. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the example of what the county did with the city of Cloverdale mm -hmm. is, is a prime example of mm -hmm. um, consulting with biologists consulting with people who work mm -hmm. on the river protection, consulting with fish and wildlife, and then uh, having the, mm -hmm. the good, strong uh, yeah. participation of, of mm -hmm. members who came as volunteers to, to CHIP, and also the, the, the mm -hmm. venture with uh, the SAC team. How would you yeah. best explain that? Well, I want to say that what you and I did have was, uh, was Vice Mayor Lance came forward and really was like, Hey, this is an issue. This this overgrown vegetation down in the river system is it's it's a couple different things, and we all know that we've been working on. Uh, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later: the homeless population and how we offer services, but also hold accountability. And so, part of it came out of uh, some of the homeless encampments down there in the area, and the fact that we had nine fires starting some of those homeless encampments had the same thing happen down here in uh, Hillsburg near the Memorial Bridge. Um, but on the other side, it was just the understanding that that was a prime interface area that if there's a fire and if we have a wind event, it's going to, the sparks are going to come into town, right? Mm -hmm. And so our firefighters do amazing work, but at the same time, we need to make sure that we reduce risk beforehand. So uh, Jen Mendoza on my staff ran point from our side, um, Todd Lands and the city folks, and you checked in and everybody else did. And I'll tell you the amount of site visits, the amount of like permits to work on, the supervised adult crews, the SAC crews that you talked about, which are um, available to us, it's uh, quite honestly, it's individuals who, uh, who would be going to jail, but instead they put in work in community service. So I was able to get it from uh, county budget about $15,000, $20,000 allocated that could go in and do the hard work down there. And this is really a pilot that everyone's looking at us in other cities and saying, wow, you guys did it. And, um, and I want to thank you, but I also, I, I, you know, you mentioned before, I want to thank the initiative of, of Todd becoming in as a new council member and saying, I want to do something. I don't want to just deliberate. And uh, for Jen on our staff and the Russian River Keeper and the volunteers to all get out there and do the consultation work that's needed and the environmental remediation and do it right. So I think that's a uh, threat addressed. And as we know, there's many more. So oh, yes. You know, and you're doing that through uh, Resilient Cloverdale and other things as well. That I think yeah, and I definitely want to talk about Resilient Cloverdale. But before we go there, you know, uh, 
I, I have to thank our city manager, David Kelly, because he wrote a very thorough grant that had absolutely no flaws. However, the funding was not there for us to receive the grant mm -hmm. to clean up on the west side of Cloverdale in, in, the, uh, in, in the open space. However, uh, it was recommended to us to go ahead and contact the local um, battalion chief and also Cal Fire uh, mm -hmm. in, in North County so that they know that we have a, a project that is ready to go in the event that there's additional funds by these other organizations. Mm -hmm. Now, we are going to resubmit um, the work in the next uh, round of applications. And we really hope that we get it this time. I mean, yes, we have not been burnt. Luckily, we still have green foliage and we have trees and all of that. However, we are at the verge of any situation. Yeah. So that is something that, um, you know, we appreciate the effort of, of David and the staff. And uh, we want to tell our constituents that we have made the effort. And then again, it's not just cutting trees. It has to be in a very methodical way. So um, that's, uh, and, and then from there, you know, from the fires that everybody else in the county suffered and that we were lucky to be able to host and help all those affected at the Citrus Fair, another entity that has become an incredible mm -hmm. stakeholder and supporter of every effort that the city has engaged in. Um, the Resilient Cloverdale came about. So we've been meeting for, for a while now, I would say a year and a half perhaps. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have reached out to the community for them to, to give a voice of what is needed. And I would like if, um, if Kit is as, um, as kind as to put the map that has been developed by this effort. And this is the evacuation map that um, Chief uh, Jason Ferguson in collaboration with um, all of the mm. other stakeholders okay. have put together. And as a, as a branch of uh, Resilient Cloverdale, we have Clover Ready. That is an effort for which the city has allocated uh, about $50,000 to the chamber to be able to do true outreach, not only on social media, but also house by house, given the restrictions of COVID, uh, printed material, uh, ongoing um, announcements mm -hmm. at the Reveille and also in Cloverdale Connect, which is uh, a new mean of communication that goes to every household every month. Okay. So that work uh, by uh, Clover, um, Clover Ready, Resealing Cloverdale, and particularly the chief, has been incredible and very useful. We've been uh, in all of the community events that have been happening in the city. We've also been in Friday Night Live. People have been able to locate what is the zone that they belong to in case of the evacuation. They know it's zone one or two or three or four, five and six. And you know, these evacuation routes are essential, not only for fires, but let's say that there is an oil spill or, or an accident on the road or perhaps um, uh, some sort of uh, water leak or, or main break or something. So this is very useful. And we want people to start becoming familiar because there's nothing like being ready when the fire comes. I mean, I just heard that one of the fires started with a few acres and all of a sudden within half an hour was like hundred yeah. acres in, um, uh, further east from here. So. You know, it's crazy. We, you mentioned this. We, uh, we all know that our conditions, even though we're getting to be in October now and it's feeling like fall and thank God it's fall, but at the same time, the conditions are not good. Yeah. We are either in a second drought in 10 years, or we've been in a drought for 10 years with two big water events that became floods, yes. depending on how you really talk about it. And so with that being said, it's, it's, it's kind of a crazy thing to think about. And I want folks to know that being ready is not being afraid, right? Yes. Um, you, one of the things that we funded out of the county is, is that all of, the, uh, um, all of the fire districts now have from the county upstaffing dollars for red flag events. That means anytime there's a red flag that comes in, 
is every firefighter and every engine is ready to go. We put a million dollars a year into that so that they can put those fires out when they're under 10 acres as opposed to the other side. And I want folks to know that if you hear about a vegetation fire on the side of 101 or if you hear about other things, that's not usually the biggest thing that's gonna kill us. The biggest thing that we have to worry about is the big, big wind events. If you even think about the Wallbridge fire last year, you know, it was a real horrible fire. We lost 200 homes up in the Mill Creek area, but we never had the wind events that really threatened the cities. So if you're looking at those, like, you know, we got to make sure that we manage this stuff right, but pay a special attention to red flag events because you want to be a part of the solution instead of the problem, right? A lot of those start, if they don't start from a PG&E line, they start from um, somebody driving down the road with uh, the car fire up in Reading started from a car that had chains that were coming off the back of it. You know, ironically, the um, uh, one of the big fires, the ranch fire up in Mendo started from somebody uh, who uh, had faulty wiring on their hot tub living out in the, in the countryside. So do what you need to do to take care of your, uh, your side too. I'm gonna change the background here a little bit because it keeps going in and out. Um, uh, just, just a moment, technical. Yeah. Challenges here. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, doing, we're doing the best we can, but we're we're uh, we're with you. Um, so one of the things I know, uh, Madam Mayor, you wanted to talk about is, is drought resiliency too. Yeah. Before um, we go to mm -hmm. uh, to that, um, quiero decirle a toda nuestra audiencia de habla español que verdaderamente no es tener miedo en momentos de una bandera roja, sino mm -hmm. estar listos, estar preparados, eh, esta, eh, saber cuál es su localidad en el mapa de la ciudad, eh, estar listo en términos de tener su mochila con los papel, copias de los papeles importantes, eh, tener un poco de agua, un poco de, de comida, etc. Y saber que cuando se activa una alarma, usted salga. Eh, nosotros en, este, en, en esta hoja que hemos preparado con la zona, también tenemos las instrucciones de qué hacer en el momento en que le indican que usted tiene que salir e, e ir preparándose de antemano, cosa de que no le tome por sorpresa. Eh, you know, the city has um, updated the emergency operation plan and we are very thankful to the city council and the police department that has done this. And once again, awareness, preparedness, activation. Yeah. And we need to also acknowledge and thank Alma Bowen because she was the very first person that worked in Cloverdale in resiliency. And we have to thank you because mm -hmm. you provided us 50% of the, of the cost of engaging in that mm -hmm. effort that was pre-pandemic. And we were able to you know, talk to people one-on-one -on -one via Friday Night Live, on knock on doors and so on. And, and we need to acknowledge that Alma is now with a nice home office in Cloverdale, across from the plaza. Mm -hmm. So welcome and thank you, because I see a lot of collaboration, a lot of strength, not only for the Latinx community, mm -hmm. but for everybody. And, and to that, we need to add that another entity that receives funding from the city is the Senior Center that has become uh, a, a beacon of food resiliency and also a beacon of information to the elder community, which is essential because we need to take care, not only of those of us who are able, but of our children and our elder. So um, yes, so now we have to pass on to what's happening with this lack of water yeah, yeah. and how sad of a, of, yeah. you know, of a site it is. Um, Do you want me to start with maybe a uh, like a global situation, like what's up? Yes. Or do you want to go into some of the uh, like specific COVID elections? Because well, yeah, we got to hit this from both sides because it really is. You know, it's uh, water is all about just like fire. It's about we. It's not about individual jurisdictions. Exactly. That's why we're here. Well, but you know, we we have been with a, mm -hmm. a regional vision in mm -hmm. in all of this. And we were one of the first towns to uh, start with um, limitations on water usage. We started at 25%. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was an update on our um, guidelines in, in order to not only keep up with ourselves, but also to comply with the, the water shortage emergency by the state and, uh, and the state water board. So we started with 25%, uh, then 
we went to 35%. At this point, I am very proud to say that all of Cloverdale has been uh, a good player here. Uh, everybody in Cloverdale, we have um, reduced water by 36% when it comes to residential required. And all around, it's been a 38% in water usage over 2020. I am proud to say that I've been at 50%. Oh, God. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. It's lifestyle change. But, but then again, yeah. you know, it's only the two of us. But even if it's just the two of us, we could be very wasteful. But uh, we, uh, I went and checked with the city to say, where am I in comparison mm -hmm. to 2020? So where That's are right. you? I'm sure that somebody has asked you yeah, that. Yeah. Huh? Uh, we are, I mean, we don't have the ability to measure because we have a well, oh, but what okay. we did is, um, so I'll tell you what we did this year is we pulled out all of our high water use plants. If you guys were here with us, you could look out just like in my yard here. So we pulled out all the stuff that was heavy water use and put back in native plants, mm -hmm. stuff that's drought resistant and drought tolerant, stuff that's good to the area. So it's good for I, you know, the other thing that's kind of cool about it is, is that when this stuff grows up, it's going to have local bees and local hummingbirds and like it's going to be part of this habitat corridor kind of work that people see. So, so the biggest thing that we did was we drastically limited our use um, outdoors. And that's the one thing that I want folks to understand is, is that the, there's two, there's two water times, you know, there's basically the summertime and then all the rest of the time. And 50% of the water use that is uh, used in the summertime is outdoor. It's not surprising. It's, it's keeping everything alive that we've planted. Um, but at the same time, that's the worst time to use the most water outdoors. Because um, as we know, we don't have any refill potential. So, uh, you know, really what I think people are grasping finally in our area, me personally and others, is, is that we need to really be, have a lifestyle change in terms of resiliency. If you live in Cloverdale and other areas, you've had to let your, your uh, lawn go dry twice in the last decade. Um, unfortunately to say that's gonna happen a lot more and we have to consider whether that kind of a use of water, which is could be 20 to 30% of the entire municipal area use for lawns is really appropriate. And, um, and it, you know, everybody says my personal freedom, but once your personal freedom becomes the tragedy of the commons and together everybody's just wasting a little bit and that becomes a big waste, then we basically get screwed. And we have Lake Mendocino and places like that running dry. So we have a lot of initiatives going on. Um, um, pass it back to you. And then maybe what I, what I can go over is, you know, the bigger question, which is people saying like, what about water sustainability in Sonoma County? How do I know that in 10 or 20 years, I'm still gonna be able to live here? And I, I wanna address that a little bit too. Yes, uh, definitely. You know, we have joined, uh, when I say we use the city, has joined uh, an agreement with Sonoma Marine Water Saving mm -hmm, Partnership. Right. And we've had two uh, two events where we have passed uh, what is called a drought bucket. Mm -hmm. It has some little utensils for you to put like um, uh, saving uh, water saving features in your shower and also for your uh, how you call it? The, the thing to water your plants. Yeah, all <laughs> your, your spigots, all your stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. right. And then a timer because we can mm -hmm. no longer take, you know, 20 minute shower or 10 minute shower. We want to go ahead and do the three to five. And, uh, you know, we with that bucket, we are flushing the toilet. We're watering our plants. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also, you know, using it to clean the the you know, the dog's yeah. paws, this, that, the other. Yeah. So we're doing all the things that normally we just turn on the water and let it run. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to become very creative, think outside of the box. And when mm -hmm. we cannot be using it, what we're doing is we're accumulating. It. We're collecting it, mm -hmm. covering it, make sure that it doesn't become, of course, a mosquito, you know, growing yeah. grounds. Uh, and uh, I welcome everybody in Cloverdale mm -hmm. to go ahead and check our website, uh, the city website, because we have uh, water saving tips and um, we are always putting articles on, on how to become more water resilient. Así que para nuestros oyentes, eh, nosotros ya hemos alcanzado un 36%, 38% de conservación de agua mm -hmm. en comparación con el año pasado. Eh, también hemos tenido dos eventos para repartir los cubitos con utensilios para economizar agua y la distribución de agua. Eh, y hemos hecho una, 
una colaboración con una organización que se llama Sonoma Marín, eh, a, ahorro y conservación de agua. Así que esto, si usted tiene alguna duda al respecto, puede ir a ver el, el sitio web de la, página, de la página de la ciudad. Y también queremos decirle que si usted no tuvo oportunidad de ir a buscar un cubito, puede ir a la alcaldía. Mm. Y ahí hay unos cuantos que pueden ir a recoger. Y es gratis. ¿eh? Uh, we're going to have other initiatives. Tendremos otras iniciativas. Eh, a lo largo de este, de este evento, ¿verdad? Pero la cosa es que seamos conscientes de la cantidad de agua que usamos, uh -huh. que, que lavemos los platos de otra forma, que pongamos una cubeta con agua en jabón, y echemos ahí los tenedores, los platos, ¿verdad? Esto, y que los lavemos bien, luego enjuagamos. Eh, y la misma cosa con el asunto de, de, de las plantas, ¿Verdad? Tener plantas que sean plantas locales, yeah. que no se, se traguen el agua, el, la poca mm -hmm. agua que tenemos. Mm -hmm. Así que, um, these are all good initiatives. And, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do with the Planning Commission, and I want to acknowledge some of the Planning Commissioners that are on the call, um, cool. that we want to make sure that any development that comes up in the future does abide by mm -hmm. local landscaping. Excellent. No maples, no this, no that, local landscaping. Things that will be comfortable in the heat that we have in Cloverdale. So, um, and you know, resiliency is not only in terms of water and mm -hmm. in terms of um, what is fire, it's also how do we educate ourselves when there's hot weather or mm -hmm. when there's extreme cold weather. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we did in terms of resiliency for the first time, we had a cooling center. Good job. And we work, and this was held at the uh, Veterans Hall. Mm -hmm. And we're very thankful to Jean and Bob Cox and all of these, uh, you know, gung-ho people who have been keeping up the fort mm -hmm. for many years. Uh, they continue to serve the community. And I tell you, I was surprised. There were people coming from River Road that is just area of influence, it's not necessarily, mm -hmm. you know, incorporated city mm -hmm. to provide cages for the for the pets and so on. Uh, mountain mics that just had a uh, ribbon cutting this afternoon, provide a pizza for the people. Uh, El Milagro gave us discount to provide food. The library came by. It's a big stakeholder in Cloverdale and we're very grateful. Uh, they came by with books and coloring mm -hmm. books and so on. So, you know, it was an effort. Uh, but it was successful, and we hope that we can organize this down the road. And that down the road, mm -hmm. uh, given the, the extreme weather that we are experiencing, we can have some funding allocation so that we can run a, a, a cooling place or yeah. uh, a heating place for those who live in substandard conditions. Also, some of the homeless uh, members in our community. You know, I, I great work on that. Great work on that. I want to call that out because. I want to tell you is, is that uh, during these events, um, I have uh, um, Mayor Cruz writing me and saying, uh, texting me photos of the of the prognosis, and it says like 113 degrees in Gloverdale. It's like, and you know, on the weekend, it's like we're getting you know our government employees rolling and like, hey, somebody they're like somebody's on vacation. Doesn't matter if somebody's on vacation. We need a cooling center, and so like you say, I really want to you know, the call out the progress that we've made, but also say that the ultimate goal of all this is to make sure that this all becomes programmatic change yes. so that it, you don't have to recreate every time. And that's also what you talked about with the work with Resilient Cloverdale, the Citrus Fair board really taking it upon themselves to meet with the uh, Salvation Army, go through how they'll manage during disasters, how they'll manage during inclement events. And, and PG&E. Yeah, and, <laughs> exactly. And I think all of that really shows what's going on in the community. It's that culture change for fires, for floods, for water use, for other things. Uh, one thing I really wanted to, to, to say, and I'm, I know we're going to go into some other kind of uh, more social issues, is, uh, is that if you really think about the drought long term, I sat down with probably, you know, our chief, like six different people who know Sonoma County water, Sonoma County aquifers and other things. And the area of Cloverdale is really connected with an aquifer that is the wider Alexander Valley area. 
And there's really two aquifers. There's really two water storage levels, right? There's one level that is kind of more connected to the river, let's just say. That's at the level of really five, 10 feet down to about 70, 80 feet. And that's the area that really uh, fills up and drains more quickly. Mm -hmm. It's not a, uh, a confined aquifer, which means that it really has uh, it, it's, it's gravel and other things. So there's water mixed with all of those other elements. If you go down into the area of more like 200 feet, 150, 200 feet, uh, 250 and plus, you have a different aquifer, a more resilient aquifer that still can recharge heavily, but also potentially provide um, uh, you know, resiliency for Cloverdale long-term that has municipal wells. So this is one of the things that I know the folks, your guys, the city, uh, you know, city utilities folks along with Hillsburg and even in the community of Geyserville where they have a water system too, are trying to make sure that they are, where they have municipal wells that are along the river is that they're not completely dependent upon Lake uh, Mendocino's flows coming down, but that we also figure out ways that if we are going to tap into the deeper aquifers, we have recharge projects. So that when we get these big rain events, we can also get that, that water back onto the land. Um, we have two studies that I think we're gonna fund later this year with the board that'll set us up for state funding to go further into that. And that's one of the big focus, uh, you know, focuses for me working with you long-term is that the most water uh, danger area in Sonoma County is really Hillsburg Cloverdale. Mm -hmm. And it's because we're not on the Lake Sonoma system, you right. know, which is pipelines and water to 600,000 people. Uh, sometimes people write me things and say, what about desalinization? Uh, desal out here would take, I mean, if we had a, a, a system that was beneficial to it, that didn't interact with the, the dying kelp beds, the domoic acid in the, uh, in, in the crabs and other things. It and was, invasious species yeah, there. It, it, would, it, it, would, it would at minimum cost five to $7,000 per acre foot, another thousand to deliver that. We're, we're currently at, at the, you know, our water is basically no cost except for transmission and transmission is about a thousand dollars per acre foot. So that's for the Sonoma water system. So just to let folks know is, is that there's, it's actually much more important these days to uh, use reclaimed water and use our wastewater and get it back into use than it is the other side. And ironically, it costs less money and it's easier to make clean water out of wastewater than it is to pull the brine out of seawater. Uh, Marin County looked into that. So it's really not a viable option for Sonoma County right now, but we feel confident that with some of our projects on the uh, recharge into the upper water, watershed, getting those flood events, that water back in, um, the deeper level recharge and utilizing the deeper, the, the, the deeper wells with all of these being environmental reviewed, these are not like political statements. These are yes. things for environmental impact reports. This is that we're gonna go after that and we're gonna have a resilient future. But it is so important that people continue to re, re, uh, reduce demand. As you said, we have buckets in, in our house where we're using water in various areas. And then we, you know, limited our water use by at least 80% outdoors this year. And, you know, another thing is that the, the infrastructure in the U.S. is aging. Yeah. I mean, it has aged, yeah. let's say. It has aged. <laughs> it's and, of age. <laughs> and uh, it, it needs refurbishing yeah. and, and it needs expansion. Uh, in Cloverdale, you know, we are our own water industry. You know, right. we, we have our own water company and uh, we need a lot of upgrades. Yeah. And it costs millions of dollars. Yeah. And and we, we're not at the same level as Windsor or Hillsburg. We need much more money yeah. um, uh, to do this. So it's very important that we continue to talk to our senators, to our yeah. assemblymen, to our congressmen, because they have a voice where our voice is not necessarily heard. So, you yeah. know, we are our local um, area and we need you, the constituents, to tell us what things are needed and how we need to continue to talk to our um, uh, assemblyman, Congress, and Senator. And I tell you, uh, Senator McGuire has been very supportive and he was, uh, his office and him were very surprised that we didn't get our call fire grant, but you know, we have their support and they, they know what's happening and so on. So, you yeah. know, now I would like for, to ask you, um, Supervisor Gore, what kind of county services can we expect mm -hmm. down the road in yeah. uh, Cloverdale? Because as yeah. you very well know, our transportation is, it's just minimal. 
And yeah. that's one of the requests by uh, the senior center to talk about what is transportation and yeah. what transportation alternatives we might have down the road. Yeah. And how can we improve what we have right now? Right now, we are one of the highest users of the uh, free local bus in Sonoma County. Mm. And, and, you know, thank you guys for using yeah. it. And yeah. I've used it also. Um, it has been expanded to Saturday. We would love to have it seven days a week, yeah. of course. And we would like to have that schedule be early, you know, start a little earlier and go a little later. Yeah. Uh, you know, also how can these logistics be work so that it doesn't have to be an empty bus uh, coming from Santa Rosa? Is there any way that we can have it in Cloverdale yeah. and perhaps go and fill up in Santa Rosa and and get it checked or change over there rather than and yeah. have uh, to, to avoid emissions also because you know we need to keep. Mm -hmm thinking how are we going to do that and when are we going to get our electric bus you know it's uh <laughs> well i think there's, there's a couple of things and i like that you're bringing this up because on one side you're talking about transportation and support right and so um in the past we've worked well together with you and, and the council and the city and the county to at times when we needed to is to figure out how to reform our the but the, the existing sonoma county transit system so you know working to get bus rides that can get kids after school over to the Boys and Girls Club. Like, you know what I mean? Changing out different setups. And I think, uh, I, I, you know, I'll take that as a, as a mandate for a follow-up for you and me with, yes. um, with, uh, with Sonoma County Transit to continue to look at optimizing and what are the resources there. Um, the other side of it, as you talk about, is county services writ large, like the deeper county services. And I think this is an important point because, you know, having been somebody who grew, grew up in Cloverdale, right? And, um, and then coming into this position and work also while working together, what's happened for the last 50 years and probably you know since the 1800s is, is that government services are created kind of in Santa Rosa and then they're offered in Santa Rosa and then it takes a while or never gets out to the fringes. So West mm -hmm. County, um, you know, far into East County, North County, others. And so what we are looking at doing right now is uh, is actually um, in conjunction with building our new county center, which will be in downtown Santa Rosa. It'll probably take five to 10 years to build that out, but is to create county um, county offices in, in other hubs. And um, we tried to do this a couple of years in Cloverdale to bring a, uh, a county human services and health and human services office to Cloverdale. Um, but we had the money to be able to move staffing and other things, but we didn't have the money to do the upfront costs. And so what we're looking at now is, uh, and, I, and I will say this is something that we are looking to deliver on, um, not only like four years into the future, but starting very soon this next year, hopefully, mm -hmm. is, is that we identify a location, whether it's an existing building um, or a partner in the uh, Cloverdale area, and we have either our employees, county employees who work for Health and Human Services and others who live in Clo Cloverdale be able to provide some services, or we have other employees come out and deliver services direct to, to people. Um, and then long-term, what we wanna do is what I'm working towards is working with um, the Alexander Valley Health Clinic with Debbie Howell and, and, and them to make sure that the county with the build out of the new clinic has a home there as well. So when folks walk into a place that is supposed to be about health and wellness, you also can go and look at your, your, uh, your WIC program, you know, your food, food programs, your nutrition programs, you can look at your job link programs, um, you can look at, so it's health and human services at the same time. And so, um, so that's something that we're looking into. And you've been a big champion of us, like not only finding ways to get people access to Santa Rosa, but also, no, 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 no. Let's switch this around and start there. Um, others have tried this in the past and we, we tried and put a lot of time and effort into it. But I think this year is the year to uh, basically set up a pilot. And, um, and with that, you know, then what I would see is, is that, the two main programs that are directly, two or three main programs that are directly for uh, the most at need in our community is, um, is basically our job works and our benefits programs. And then on the other side, it's our health programs and specifically our behavioral health programs. Um, you know, a lot of the work that we do where we embed into the health clinic or others and have opportunities that we, as the county that take on um, the safety net of last resort is that we provide that. So. Um, then I think outside of that, what we could look at is, is that if there's folks, if there's issues with the Economic Development Board or permitting or other things, is we could do those at certain times during the week and line people up for uh, 
uh, for appointments so that we would have that set up. So I see, I see that, you know, trying to figure out the staffing and how it works and just going through the messy process of trying to make it right. And then um, I also, we plan to sign a letter of support and partnership as a county with Alexander Valley Healthcare for the grant that they're putting into uh, the federal government for, uh, um, for funding to help uh, fund us towards the new clinic development, which you all, I think you have an update on that too, on like where you're at. Well, yes, uh, I, I had to recuse myself from voting on the Alexander oh, Valley Health right because I live right <laughs> there. Uh, but uh, the council did approve mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the sale to Alexander Valley Health uh, mm -hmm. representative. Mm -hmm. And now they can go ahead and, and go for grants application because uh, in order for them to get grants, they need to have you know, uh -huh. uh, possession of the property. So let's hope that that happens. I mean, it's still um, somewhat ahead, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, another big issue for us as well as for the rest of the county and surrounding counties is mm -hmm. housing. Yeah. You know, we have a, a serious situation uh, that we cannot enforce when people are renting substandard uh, units mm -hmm. to individuals who are poor and uh, or people who do not know what is available. So that kind of orientation mm -hmm. is yeah. essential for all the individuals. Entonces, en español, un momentito. Eh, aquí el, el supervisor Gore está hablando de los servicios del condado y del estado que pueden traerse a Cloverdale. Está contemplando que una vez se haga la clínica Alexander Valley, esto, pues ahí ellos van a tener un espacio para proveer eh, uh -huh. servicios. Eh, mientras tanto, estamos, eh, está buscando él y yo también, y, y busco sugerencias ustedes también, para ver dónde se puede ir a proveer estos servicios uh -huh. a, lo, a las personas de Cloverdale, que no pueden llegar a Hillsburg, que no pueden llegar a Santa Rosa. Uh -huh. Incluso, this also includes your county area of Geyserville, yep. the community of Geyserville. Yep. The community of Geyserville and Cloverdale are pretty much one. You know, we have many other members of Familia Sana, which is another kudos for uh, Ezekiel and Elston, uh, Mayra, and now the new direct executive director, Jay Wim, Wim, what is it? Waymorth or Wayworth? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a difficult last name for me uh, because they have being able to work with food resiliency, not only in Cloverdale, but in Geyserville. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I see people from Geyserville in Cloverdale all the time. And I, I you know, I was <laughs> mentioning it to, to one of the individuals in the planning commission there um, that we need to do some sort of commercial exchange, you know, go to Cloverdale and get discount, mm -hmm. or go to Geyserville and get discount on this day or that day, mm -hmm. or do some things together because the communities are intertwined you know, um, many of the farms, like Vanoni Farm, is divided by the by the river. But yeah. at one point, you could go from Cloverdale all the way to that area of Geyserville, yeah. and so yeah. on. So um, uh, it is it is mm -hmm. the county; it's your community, and that it's our community as incorporated city mm -hmm. uh, that that we need to continue to work because anymore it's regional efforts and re regional approach mm -hmm. to resources and to collaboration. You know, it's um, I like what you're saying, and you know, it, it hits on so many different things. Because personally, I even though I live just south of Hillsburg, I still drive to the Ukiah DMV, you do. right? And if I was going to be in, uh, I don't want to go in the, you know, if I have a choice on a, on a free weekend, which way I'm going to go? If I go south and towards Windsor and more people, and Santa Rosa and more people, and San Francisco more people, or north, I always go north. Maybe because I grew up in, in, in Cloverdale too, but uh, I think that that's the county service model that's really needed. So we're looking to do it in base, base it in Cloverdale, then also uh, in Sonoma Valley in the Springs area, and then also in West County in Guerneville so that we take that model and go. There's already a service center in Petaluma, and uh, that's been very helpful to South County. Um, it was a unique situation that a building was like, there was partnership for free to do it. So. Um, so that's what we need to do. And you know, uh, you, you very well know that Cloverdale is now like 40% Latino. Yeah, the latest census. In the latest census. Shows the job. And it's not surprising, you guys, for you you personally for, for years, and even when I was working with, um, with uh, 
uh, you know, George Ortiz and, and others with the binational health fairs and Bob Cox. And I remember he posted something the other day with me and him at, uh, at Independence Day with the Grito and all these other things. This is that, you know, there's, there's a thriving community that is really, uh, let's be real, by the time not only Cloverdale, but by the time we hit 2050, Sonoma County's ethnic majority is going to be Latino. And that is something to embrace. That is not something to fear for those of us uh, buenos, uh, gringos, you know? And that's our diversity, that's our power. And so taking, you know, doing what we need to and basing it on services and health and other things and helping people move forward is the best thing. I'll tell you one of the things that you and I did that I'm the most excited about is going around Cloverdale and seeing all the small businesses open up, but also all the Latino owned businesses. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and um, that's just been so stinking inspiring to see. So, um, and you know, we got to keep in mind that yeah. we also need to talk to our senator and our congressman yeah. uh, because we need to provide services to the immigrant community and those yeah. who are applying for citizenship, yeah. for permanent uh, residency, and yeah. also for work permits. Yeah. I mean, there is a housing uh, program for Braceros. But we need to think also of those people who are here 100% of the time and who have made Sonoma County their mm -hmm. home yeah. and who have children who are here yeah. and so on. So uh, those are things that we need to keep in mind. Estamos hablando sobre la necesidad de los servicios para la comunidad inmigrante. Okay. Los que andan buscando ciudadanía, los que están solicitando residencia mm -hmm. permanente, permiso de trabajo, mm -hmm. etc. Porque todos somos un tejido de seres humanos, independientemente de cómo nos veamos. Uh -huh. Aquí, esta, esta tarde tú con el blanco, yo con uh -huh. el blanco, uh -huh. rojo, azul, estamos, de, estamos muy, muy nacionales, ¿verdad? Muy patrióticos uh -huh. en ese aspecto. Uh, Un tejido, one tapestry. Right? Okay. You know, so uh, one thing that I, we're going, uh, we, ha we have some questions and some other things we've been trying to address, stuff that was already sent to us beforehand. I do want to give a couple high level updates for folks on stuff outside maybe of the city that's happening as well. I want, I want people to know that there's a very proactive movement going forward to, to, to not just to design, but to, to finally build a bridge, a permanent bridge at Asti. Um, it's actually, I, I know, you know, some people, most people want it. There's some people who, who question it, but you know, the reality is, is that it's a fire safety hazard, number one. And it always will be, and it's more difficult for us every year uh, to get the permits to do it. And you have to focus on the future. So we have uh, done a lot of work in scoping it out. There's been a great uh, team of, of landowners out there that have worked with me on it. And I actually believe um, not in a politician speech sense, but from a practical perspective, working with them is that we are um, close at hand to making a deal in a long-term investment in a bridge. We'd have to get uh, money from the infrastructure package, um, but there is money through U.S. Department of Ag Rural Development that we could leverage. Instead of spending the money from the county every year to put it and pull it out, is using that money as a basically a service payment onto a loan for a long-term bridge, um, other things like that. Um, you know, the other thing is people ask me a lot about SMART, um, the SMART train, the, uh, you know, which Cloverdale, Hillsburg, and others have continued to pay money into, but we do not have service in North County. I'll tell you, it's a fight. Uh, we have to fight to make sure that happens. Carol Russell, former council member, uh, used to say, uh, sit on the smart board, used to say, uh, no taxation without transportation, right? And like- And I'm know, sure Melanie Backey is on yes, that. Yes, <laughs> and Melanie is. And so, you know, the big point there is, is that we are in a situation where it is still unclear that will develop. We all fight for it. Uh, Jared Huffman actually got a, uh, a large earmark uh, into the federal budget to be able to pay for a big uh, impediment to getting it up to Cloverdale, which is um, the train bridge over Memorial Beach at uh, Hillsburg. Mm -hmm. And so if we get the funding for that, then it's back on the table <laughs> and we're looking towards North County. Um, but you know, that also brings broadband business opportunities yeah. and so on that is so needed. And with COVID, no. you know, we we realized the need for uh, true internet, Wi-Fi mm -hmm. access for students, for workers. And every day, everything seems to be 
online. Yeah. And as much as Just we would like, like to, right now. yeah, as mm -hmm. much as we would like to be person to person, we have to make sure that uh, that is what's happening. Now, any questions, uh, yeah. any concerns that people may have? And while we're waiting for those, um, I would like to see if Keith can start putting some information that yeah. I forwarded to him yeah. uh, in terms of um, uh, events that are going to be happening in Cloverdale. You know, Cloverdale is such a knit community. Mm -hmm. It's like it uh, is. everybody is uh, collaborating with one another. Uh, tomorrow it is, um, well, this is coming up. The Rotary sponsored. Uh, Asti Tour de Vin yeah. or the Vine. Yeah, the Vine. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it's sold out and it's one of the beautiful events that happen mm -hmm. in, in the county. And I welcome all of you to volunteer. Mm -hmm. That is not close. And so I'll contact the Rotary um, Club for that. And this is the big thing that is happening is the mm -hmm. decoration of houses. And you need to submit oh, your uh, address no later than October 22nd, so that we can go around and look at all of this, uh, at all of these houses and choose uh, who's going to get the prices. Uh, we also going to have um, the the trick or treat event in the business district in downtown Cloverdale. So make sure that you bring your kids out there, and uh, from four to six. Mm -hmm. And we have to be so grateful to the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, they really have come forth in promoting all the efforts of Cloverdale. And we're also looking for docents at the History Center. So, and, and I also bring the History Center because the city donates money, contributes to monies to different entities, nonprofits. And the History Center is one of those mm -hmm. recipients. And we are looking for docents. Our docents are aging, just like our infrastructure. <laughs> so we need replacements. And coming up also is the uh, uh, Kiwani sponsor, uh, Cloverdale Vineyard Races, October 24th, 20, uh, 24th to November 24th. Please make sure you go to these pages and find mm -hmm. out what's going on. Um, and this weekend, on Saturday, we have the uh, Kiwani sponsor Oktoberfest. Oh, yeah. The change is that it's going to be at the Citrus Fair. Okay. It has been at the Plaza in the past, and it's going to be at the Citrus Fair. Also, due to uh, the celebration of Latinx um, Hispanic uh, Heritage Month, the library has an incredible amount of programs that you and your family can enjoy. So make sure you go to the library. You know, the library is a big stakeholder and supporter of everything that we do in Cloverdale. So please make sure you also get your card. In addition, uh, we are going to have, let's see, uh, we, we have to recognize the Arts Alliance because tomorrow is the last Friday Night Live. And guess what? You get to practice your salsa steps. It's Cuba, a Cuban group tomorrow. Yeah. So see if you and Elizabeth can come up. Uh, I did see you uh, taking some steps over there yeah, at, did, at, at, the, at the Healthcare Foundation. The yeah. So uh, I, I thank you for, okay, there is a... There's a question. Does anyone have a question? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the question because yeah. we are coming to the end of our time. And the only other thing I want to say while we're waiting is, is that we're planning to do this again next month. Yes. And then the month afterwards. So the goal for us, like, uh, when you know, and I just want everybody to know this is whether, whether you're online is that the goal for us is to one, number one is this is being recorded. We're going to post it afterwards on our pages and, and, and hopefully we'll figure out if there's, if we can put them on the town and the county page as well, um, but, our, but our pages. And then also uh, Keith, I wanna thank Keith Roberts, uh, who's on um, uh, right now moderating all this. Uh, there's some follow-up stuff. So we're gonna make sure that the post that we do has, has connections to the community events that you focused yes. on and some of the other, the other resources like where the, you can find the map for the evacuation zones and maybe the map for the evacuation zones in the county that are outside of the city area. And, um, and so we're just gonna make sure we do a good job. Um, I did see one question come up that says, what's gonna go on with the veterans building? 
Um, well, there's a lot going on with the Veterans Building. I think. Uh, and the pool. I, yeah, I think that's the most important thing. So, number one is is that when I got elected, I want to thank uh, Gene Marcinkowski, Bob Cox, and a bunch of others who have really leaned in on taking over ownership of uh, the uh, um, of well, basically of the Veterans Building, so that it really became a Veterans Building. Um, I'll tell you from before that it was you know if you look at it, it was county run and only the county had the keys and it was it was bureaucracy it was it was really tough it was expensive to use it it, it was kind of off limits and so what we did is we worked hard to sign agreements and transfer over management ownership of it to the veterans uh groups and they run it marvelously uh we put we put our own uh money into fixing some of the uh the, the, the areas uh inside on the, on the main area but i want to call out the uh the veterans were putting time and effort and energy and, and money, money. <laughs> and money into uh, into the side where the bar is and where the the area the area is, and it's now a vital resource for veterans of all ages. Um, what we've been working on the last two or three years, uh, your current colleague who was on the council before, Joe Paula, we worked on this, and then you and others brought it up again, and we uh, we finally have secured the funding for. Uh, um, to, uh, to 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 put forward uh, for a full reboot of the uh, of the pool and uh, the pool. It started with a conversation about how to have the pool uh, be able to stay open longer to get a solar uh, part. Uh, a guy, you know, from the school board, Preston Addison, got in and said, "Why can't we keep the uh, the pool warm longer instead of get it heated?" And so we went into it, and all of a sudden, it, it was like opening a can of worms, and all of a sudden. We're now, now we're going in and we have to put the money into safety upgrades. So we got at least uh, $650,000 from the county. You and I worked together, others to bring that to the table, the board approved it. So we are going to, after this um, this this season, uh, move into uh, putting all of that uh, money to work. And uh, the goal is to have it open and ready and refresh the pool area next year. Um, and then the other question is really like, it, you know, everything these days has to be like, we got to make sure we, uh, figure out the co-ownership and moving forward. The Vets Building, we've had conversations about if that's one place that we want to look at providing county services, but we have to sit and talk with the Vets about that. We have to talk with the Citrus Fair about that. We have to talk with uh, the, senior center. Uh, the Senior Center about that, and also uh, maybe uh, City Hall itself. Um, so, Which you know, is flooded right now. Well, there you go. Okay. Um, so I think those are the, you know, those are the things for me, like the county really has a responsibility to continue to upkeep that that area and are there going to be some upgrades to the veterans hall well so the biggest upgrade is every time we do these better better veterans halls upgrades we have to fight for the money for them individually so right now it was all about you know the work that went in to, to getting the money for the pool upgrade and now what i'm what my commitment is is to go back again and identify what's the next biggest thing what's the next best thing and so the veterans in conjunction with our general services are going to have to tell me if if it's the roof, if it's uh, you know, if it's if it's accessibility, if it's parking HVAC. lot or whatever, HVAC, yeah. So, and you know, you're dealing with this. You you guys deal with this with uh, the city's involvement with the senior center, and then as the Citrus Fair as well as you know, all of these old, these older facilities need so much uh, love and care and true investment, and everything's expensive to do these days. But it's the work we have to do. So, yes. well, unfortunately, better. we've come to uh, to the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are going to take any questions that we're not answered and we'll, and we'll respond to you. Mm -hmm. we, have your, uh, we have your email and we will make sure to follow through. And, yeah. and uh, hopefully this was done in the spur of the moment. Yeah. Even though we were talking about it for a while, we couldn't confirm it until Monday. Yeah. So we've done the best that we've exactly. been able to uh hopefully next time we'll have simultaneous interpretation yeah. we have to talk to alegria yeah. and jenny and so yeah. on to do this yeah. but uh you know we we are trying everything we're trying to think outside of the box well that's the thing so if you if we didn't do anything right tell us but tell us what we can do better exactly you know that's the key give us a solution 
we live in a world where uh, like Facebook and things like that are like, well, why did you do this? Por qué no hiciste eso en español? Or why did you do that? I mean, we're just trying, we're, we're just trying to get the word out. And if, if there's other people who want to be involved, if we need to use this platform to get other updates from other community folks and not just us talking, I mean, our goal is, is to make it happen and make sure that people have the information they need and they feel engaged in the way that it works. Uh, from one uh, passionate public servant to the next, thank you, uh, appreciate you instigating this and hold me accountable to come with you and uh, present Unified. Yes, definitely. And next time uh, we'll have uh, mm -hmm. Vice Mayor Lance with us. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, homelessness, um, really the work that we've set up, but the regional collaborative we have, um, what we need to do in terms of permanent housing, shelter housing, uh, safe parking areas to be able to also show demonstrable change and improvements on the streets to our residents. Oh, but before we go, there's mm -hmm. one thing I have to say. Mm -hmm. You know, the Zero Waste Sonoma, who's the which is a, a joint powers. Yeah, yeah, authority. Jo JPA, joint JPA, powers. JPA, joint powers. Oh, the government JPA. of governments. I'm yeah, sure yeah. everybody loves that. So, you know, it's like we're having uh, zero waste events coming up. Uh, it is going to be on Cloverdale Connect. Hmm. Uh, it's also a zero waste uh, page. And we received uh, a big grant hmm. to establish the CRB again ah. in five communities and Cloverdale is one of them. So the CRV is your the, ability to show up and recycle locally, right? And recycle your mm. bottles, your cans, and some uh, of your plastics and you get money for it. Uh, we need that. Um, um, could you put that up so people can see what we're trying to get a space for, mm. uh, Keith? This morning we had a meeting with a possible location that it's like wonderful and I hope it happens. Uh, this is not only about recycling, it's also about providing an opportunity for people with disabilities to become uh, employed and to have a more fruitful life. And uh, it works with the cerebral palsy uh, oh, group. Cool. And it's in PETA, they are the, the haulers that will take whatever we recycle to Petaluma. Now, uh, I'm really working hard. I've been working on this for a mm -hmm. while, but hopefully by 2022, January, February, we'll have a CRV, which is now being called a small recycling center. Yeah, that's great. So, I know a lot of people had a real big problem with that. Yeah, a mini about, recycling. Oh, he found it. Mini recycling center where uh, this is what it's going to look like. It's, it's, you know, it's a 25 feet oh, uh, wide uh, thing. We're going to have a person oh, that's great. three times a yeah. week for four yeah. hours. It's probably going to be, you know, one evening and two during the day. You're going to get a debit card that you can use anywhere. And that's Great. where your money is going to go. So I'm hoping that organizations see this is the debit card that you will get once you recycle right. your stuff. And, uh, you know, right now I'm the chair of uh, Zero Waste Sonoma. Okay. And yeah. uh, I've been very pushy, but it's been great. We had a very good meeting. About <laughs> if I'm the chair, I better get one of these in my community. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and, you know, people have been asking for it for a long time. Yeah. And we really want to yeah. make sure that that is there uh, for us. So thank you very much. Hey, Good evening. You know, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And to everybody out there, you know, let us know what we can do to do this better. This was, even though we've talked about it, we're trying to figure it out. And we just said, we just got to try this. And so whether you're a member of the council, on the planning commission, an active constituent, whatever it is, let us know if we need to implement something into this or if you want to do something that highlights it in your way too. Um, it's all about just uh, getting stuff done. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Goodbye.